Hello, my name is Stacy Roshan. Thank you for joining me today. I am the Director of Innovation and Educational Technology at my school. I am also the author of Tech with Heart. And today I'm really excited to have a chance to share with you how I have used a Wacom tablet paired with Pear Deck in order to give richer instruction. I've done this in both my face-to-face -face and in my purely online class setting. I taught AP Calculus in a purely online setting for a number of years. So I'm gonna show you some of the tips and strategies that I have in this video today. First off, let me show you the different types of tablets you can choose from. So the one that I'm showing you today that I'm actually writing on is the Wacom One. And that is the one that I use and love the most. I use it to create all my flipped lessons. It's also something you can use in the classroom. One thing to know about the Wacom One is that you do need to plug it in. So you need to have it plugged into your computer and also to a wall outlet. If you need something that is more portable, if you need something that's actually Bluetooth wireless, then you want to go with the Wacom Intuos tablet. And that is a blank slate style tablet where you have to look up at your screen to know where you're writing, but it's also a great option. And the newest option that Wacom has that I actually have right here is the one by Wacom. That's the one with the red backing. And this one is actually Chromebook compatible too. If you have a Chromebook, that is the one to go for. And that one you do need to plug into your computer, but only one cord that plugs into your computer. You don't need a wall outlet. It's also smaller, easy to carry around the classroom if you have an opportunity to get a class set of these tablets. It's definitely the one I would recommend for students. That's the one by Wacom. Now, let's dig into why I love Pear Deck so much. For me, my students actually all have a Wacom tablet in the classroom, and so they can draw their ideas, and I can see all of that visually on the board. It is a way for me to hear what every single student in the classroom is thinking, how they're processing the question, and then to highlight all the responses of the class on the board without calling an individual student out, without my classroom being a space where the only way to contribute is by raising your hand. Now I'm able to hear from all the different types of voices in my classroom. So I am gonna show you a lot of the ways that I use it as an instructional tool today, but I do also use Pear Deck with students for them to be able to showcase what they're thinking in the format that best fits their needs. We still bring the conversation to the board and those who are more vocal, their voice can shine in that moment. But how do we hear from all the different types of learners in our classroom? Pear Deck has been a solution for me. I'm not really going to spend time on talking about what Pear Deck is today, but if you haven't used it before, it is an add-on for your Google Slides. You can also use it with PowerPoint Online, depending on what you use. I use it with Google Slides, and then you have the ability to add all of these interactive question types. And I'm sure you can guess that I love the drawing type question the most. So how do I actually use it for instruction in my classroom? I actually join the Pear Deck as a student so that I'm on the same Pear Deck that students are so that I'm able to write as students are writing. What I mean by that is the same code that I give students, I go ahead and I just grab that code. So I grab that give students a link code and then I open up another tab and I simply paste in that link. And so I'm able to join as both a teacher and a student at the same time, and I can toggle between those views as I need it. Pear Deck allows students to first do a temperature check so that you can see how all students are doing. Make sure that you're asking good questions so that they're able to talk to you and let you know what they need. So once I'm joined as a student, that is going to give me the ability to ink up my slides in the same way that a student is able to ink up theirs. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a moment. So let me go back to the teacher end. Now you can set up everything in advance so that your slides all are drawing type slides. But what if you're in the middle of the lesson, you're like, I wish I could give some extra instruction right here. You can do that in Pear Deck and that's something that not everybody's aware of. So I really wanna showcase that right now. So you can add a question on the fly by going to new prompt and then you'll see that there's all these different question types. But if you go 
to the second bank of slides, you'll see that you can choose this draw a picture type, and that would allow you to have just a blank whiteboard to write on. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I pull that up, this is what it looks like on the teacher end. It says draw a picture. I can't actually draw on the teacher end. So that's when I go back to my student end, and here I can now write whatever I need on a blank whiteboard. So I can be projecting this screen for my students, and then they have the ability to write, but I also have the ability to write. So let me go ahead and make my pen a little smaller. I can so easily change colors just like that. I can also highlight, say that you wanted to highlight some text. You can do that using the highlighter tool and students have the ability to do the same thing. So there's some things that students can do without a pen if you don't have that. And then you as a teacher can pull up the pen tool. So now if I go back to the teacher end, you'll see that I have the ability to show all responses and you can just keep the focus on your response if you want students to just be focused on what you have written. But if your whole class has contributed, that would be a way to see all the different replies and you can scroll through them. There is this grid layout right here and you would be able to see them all displayed in a grid. Let me go back to list layout and let me move back to the slide that I was on before because one other thing that you can do in addition to just doing a plain whiteboard, say that I wanna mark up this actual slide on the fly. I can go to new prompt here and if I go to actually the last bank, you'll see that I have this drawing tool that I can mark up this actual slide with drawing. So let me use that one. And so now if I go to the student end, you'll see that I now have the pen tools on this slide so that I can mark this up as I need. And if I go back to the Pear Deck and I open up the slides that I have right here to see all the slides, you'll see that those two additional slides that I just added are added to my deck on the fly, just like that, okay? Let's move on and let me show you how I actually use this in my AP Calculus class. So I'm going to show you an actual lesson. In this one, I'm gonna log in as a student so you can see how I use it for instruction. So I do, again, I log in as a student. My first slide, oftentimes I've set this up so that I have my agenda as a Google Doc. So I make this a website style slide so that I have my agenda right there. We can start class with the agenda. Then we move on and in this particular one, Students had just taken a test, so I give them an opportunity to type some reflections so they can go ahead and just type their thoughts there. Easy for them to do on their laptop. Then I'm asking just a general question in this one. Go ahead and talk about a win. I love to ask students how they're doing before class starts. So start with something a little bit non-calculus specific before we dive into the calculus, just to make sure they're good. And then in this particular one, I ask them what's on their mind, if they had any questions to start so that I was sure that I was addressing their needs for the day. After that, we dive into a little bit of a warm up. So this is a draggable question type. So students would just drag the dot to answer the question. Then we could talk about that as a class and I would showcase the responses on the board and talk about it. But again, I'm just taking you through my slides today and kind of my thinking. So then we do a warm up, And again, this is one because students have a tablet, they're able to write out their answer to this on the actual Pear Deck, but if you didn't have tablets, you might just have them write their final answer with the mouse or get them some multiple choice options. You would have to structure it a little bit differently than I have, but what I wanna show you is that from there, after I have students do some warm up, I actually dive into a lesson portion of class where even though this is a Pear Deck that all students have joined, I'm just writing at this point. So this is a slide where only I'm going to be writing and students would just watch me write, but I like to keep everything in one place. So I want this all stored in one Pear Deck. So instead of turning their attention back to a whiteboard or a different application, I do it all in Pear Deck. So I ask students, just watch me. They don't write during this. If they wanna write and take notes at the same time as me, that's their option. However, I really focus on using Pear Deck as a teacher in this moment. So again, you have to be logged in as a student to have the writing tools because logged in as a teacher, it looks like this screen right here. So you don't have all of those drawing tool options. So that's why you have to be logged in as a student. 
And at this point, then I can just draw and we can have a class conversation. So that's where we really talk about, I ask them kind of help me identify what the A plus H in this case might be. Uh, students would know what I'm talking about and I can draw and talk at the same time. And I think that is so, so powerful, that ability to draw and talk and use just very simple tools here to kind of point, talk, and make sure that students are following what we're saying. So as they're doing that and they're talking me through what they want me to write next, I can be writing that down as they're telling me what they're looking at. And so that is how I use Pear Deck for both instruction and interaction at the same time. I'm gonna show you the benefit of keeping it all in this one Pear Deck as we go on too. So just to take you through a couple more slides, you'll see that this is a discussion one because a lot of students had missed this on their homework. So I wanna make sure that we do this as a class. I've set this up so I have the question, I have the graph so that we can talk about it. And again, I can be writing and talking at the same time. Huge power there. And that's what I really need, my Wacom tablet combined with the power of Pear Deck's drawing tool. So I'm gonna just be going over in this lesson, I just went over a bunch of questions that students had. And then we dive into a little bit of a trig review. So again, a little bit more instruction. And then at this point, I'm gonna turn it back to students and say it's your turn. So at this point, again, if students didn't have the tablets, you could have them solve it on their piece of paper. And then we bring it to the board after everybody's had a chance to try the problem on their own. But I like to kind of give them that little exit ticket, allow them to try it before they go into group work for the day. And then I have some closing reminders here for what's coming up next. Just make sure that I mention that. Then I ask them at the end, how the lesson go? So I'm sure if anybody has a thumbs down, if they've dragged their dot over here, that I'm gonna follow up with them immediately and make sure that they're doing okay as we dive into the lesson. Anything else, I like to leave some space so students can communicate with me in the Pear Deck. Some of them do that, and others of them just wait till the Pear Deck's over, and then they raise their hand. Again, how do we provide forums for all students to communicate what they need with us? This is a great tool to do that. And then I usually just end with the agenda that I had shown at the beginning to make sure that I didn't forget anything because if I don't write it down, often there's so much going on that I might forget something. So I like to end with that agenda also. All right, so let's turn back to my slides. Now that we've gone through this sample lesson together, I just wanna mention the last thing, which is why I so appreciate keeping everything in this one Pear Deck. Because when I do, and I've written on each slide, I can publish at the end the takeaways. So if you are in Google Slides and you have a premium Pear Deck, you have the ability when you end the lesson, let me go back to the teacher end of this lesson, you have the ability when you press the end button, to end the session and publish the student takeaways. And when you publish the student takeaways, what that's going to do is it's going to automatically, just like I'm showing right here, generate a Google Doc with the questions you have and the student responses that they have given. So each student gets a copy of their work at the end, but also because you had logged in as a student, you get a copy. And so what I do is I actually post the takeaways that I have gotten as a student, and I post that as kind of the answer key or notes for students to be able to review, or if anybody's absent, of course, I can give that to them. And that's just another fabulous benefit of using Pear Deck because I have all my notes stored in one place and it automatically generates this note sheet after class as a Google Doc that I can share. So to conclude, I just want to end with this quote that I begin Tech With Heart with, how can we shift from a first is best culture to one that sends a message that everyone's voice matters and that everyone has a potential to excel in the classroom? For me, Pear Deck has been one of the tools that has been a game changer in achieving this goal. And I'm going to end on that note. I wanna thank you again for joining me today. I hope you got some ideas for how you can use your Wacom tablet combined with Pear Deck for instruction and for student engagement. And most importantly, to just hear from all the different voices in your classroom to make sure that we're doing individual check-ins and get around to students based on what they need for the day. Thank you.